This video is sponsored by Brilliant, more about them in a moment. And today we are going to see how to create a Nerdbender effect. It's one of those effects that always reminds me of Avatar Last Airband. There's some very interesting tricks here, and it's an awesome effect leaning to the stylized aspect and you can get it on my Patreon's page links below. Brilliant.org is this really innovative app and website where you can learn basic to advanced science concepts without hurry. It has tons and tons of courses from 3D geometry, programming and so many more. And it has this awesome thing which is intuitive and interactive examples. That takes knowledge and puts it in practice. That's brilliant, really. I actually started with scientific thinking because I'm fascinated by it and I got even more fascinated when all these concepts that revolve around hot matter, heat flow or pressure got me thrilled for quite some time. And there is this cool one that I enjoyed about gears, super simple, super fun to play with. And now I'm looking forward to this one, time travel. And it's all free for 30 days, so visit brilliant.org slash prod or click on the link in the description, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So essentially there are two distinct things we need, the rock and its motion, basically the way it moves up, shakes a little bit and then it goes down. So let's do exactly that first, and then we will improve on top of that. So first with right click on a folder we can create a visual effect graph, I'm gonna rename it to VFXGraph underscore Herdbender tutorial, drag and drop it to the scene, and press the edit button to open VFX Graph. It keeps on emitting particles as you can see because of this constant spawn rate. We can remove it and add the burst with spacebar, a single burst, of only one particle. This is going to be for the center rock, the rock in the middle. It's going to need velocity, but not in here. We are going to use it down here in the update particle in a moment. For now, let's say the set lifetime is constant. 3 seconds will do just fine for this example. Another thing we can take care of already is we are outputting a quad, it's basically a plane, but in this case we want to use a mesh. So let's drag a line and search for mesh and, and it's spawning a capsule, which is fine for now, but Let's control the size with the set size. One. All right. And we can add another block, which is going to be useful, the set scale, to stretch it in the Z or in the Y or in the X. And it's important to notice that it is intersecting the ground. Part of the capsule is below the ground. And since we didn't create this object from scratch, we can still control the pivot in VFX graph. With the set pivot, we want this to start below the ground. So I'm going to say the Y, it's going to be 1. There we go. It's right there below the pivot, the ground, the point zero. Right, so for the motion, we are going to use the update particle. We are going to use the set velocity in here. If I set the Y to 1, as you can see, it keeps on going up forever. We want to control that. The way we do it is with a curve. We can sample a curve. Out here, we got two inputs, the curve and the time, and the time. We can use age over lifetime, which is basically the lifetime up here, but normalize it from 0 to 1. Now let's start with this line, which is always at 1. And more or less around here we can add the key, we right click, and then on the same key, right click and select the edit key. And the value is going to be 0, and the time it's going to be 0 0.2. Now near the end, more or less around here, let's add another key. Right click and say the value is 0, but the time is 0 0.8. And for the last key, right click, the time is 1, but the value is minus 1. Let's see how this goes, if we leave this curve as it is. Connect it to the Y of the set velocity. And it's moving a little bit up. 
and that's it. Let's amplify this curve by multiplying this with something like 11. Ah, now we can see it in action. Now it's just a matter of adjusting the curve. But first, let's switch this capsule to the object we are going to use in the VFX. And you can get this object, by the way, on the Asset Store. I left a link below. It's free. It's awesome. Shout out to Poly Ninja. Great asset. Link below. Add it to your assets. Then in Unity, in the Package Manager in My Assets, we can go ahead, select the free and painted rocks and boulders, download it, import it, and here it is, the Poly Ninja. You can always convert these materials to URP, in case they are pink, you can go to Edit, Any Materials, Convert, Selected Built-in Materials to URP. But we are not going to use the material, so in VFX Graph now, we can go ahead and in the Mesh, we are going to use the Free Rock Model 3, this one. And for the texture, it's the rock and boulders, this one. If you press play, this is transparent. You can say the blend mode is opaque. Awesome, we are starting to see something. We just need to adjust the curve now, the motion. And before adjusting the motion, the curve, let's increase the scale in the Y to 2. Great, so for the curve, we don't want this to oscillate that much. Let's add a key more or less around 0 0.6 and we right click say the time is 0 0.6 and the value 0. Right click again and flat for the handles. Another key more or less around here, edit key and 0 0.45 and value of 0. Flat again, basically we are saying that it's not going to move between 0 0.45 and 0 0.6 percent of the lifetime. As you can see, it stays right there. Cool. So here's what I'm going to do now in the beginning of the curve. I'm going to add two more keys so it wobbles just a tiny bit and then it stops. Yeah, like this. And near the end, I'm going to do the same but I'm going to make it more intense so it seems like it's shaking because it's going below the ground, you know? Yeah, something like this shakes more. As you can see, the curves are bigger, the amplitude. Yeah. That's pretty much it. You can obviously adjust this correctly. Just to polish how the curve works, how it translates to the motion of the rock. That's very important. For now, this central rock is pretty much done. So now let's select everything and we right click. Let's create a group selection. Rename this to central rock because we want to copy this whole group. Ctrl C then Ctrl V. We are going to use it to create some to create some smaller rocks at the base of this central rock. Like it's pushing the ground and there's some rocks around it. It's just a quick nice touch. So we need to increase the count up here in the single burst to 15. Let's also add a little delay before loop exactly. And in terms of lifetime it's going to be pretty much the same but render between something like 3.2 and 3.6. Right. We also want this to spawn around the rock. So a circular shape should be fine. Let's decrease the radius so it fits around our central rock. Yeah, we cannot see it. So let's take care of the aspect of this first. Down here we can switch the mesh to this pack came with a pebble, which is awesome for this. The free rock model one. As you can see, here they go. Yeah, let's remove the set pivot, we don't need it. We don't need to offset them. Let's also remove this set velocity, we don't need this to move, it's going to spawn at the base. Right, probably now we can see the circle and now they are spawning, we can rotate this minus 90. So it faces the ground, exactly like this. And let's add some randomness now, as you can see they are spawning already around with a set angle. Random between 360 and minus 360, in the X and in the Y, cool, yeah that's pretty nice. Another thing we can do is control how they appear and disappear. With a set size of our life, we want to say it's multiply in the overwrite, so it doesn't overwrite the set size. Let's start with this curve and more or less around 0 0.8. Let's add a key and then push the last one all the way down. They are going to disappear, they are going to shrink basically. 
and more or less in the beginning around 0 0.05 let's add another key and push the first key all the way down so they grow a little bit in the beginning like really quick as you can see and then towards the end they shrink yeah this in combination with the smoke will look nice right so that's it for these small rocks at the base now we can add another cool thing which is some rocks flying around once the rock forces the ground up Ctrl C and Ctrl V on this smaller rock base group we can call this one the flying rocks and essentially they are going to leave less like 0 0.4 and 1.8 for example we need a shape but not a circle we need a sphere instead, set position sphere but with a smaller radius, 0 0.5 is fine and we can push it a little bit above the ground like 0 0.4 in the Y exactly and for the motion we are going to use a very cool block here called the set velocity from direction and speed spherical we can say the speed is random between 2 and 14 for example here we go rocks flying around let's make sure this speed is random between 2 and 14 but they are big and it should come down eventually right so let's say they are smaller in the set size we can say it's random between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 for example and we can also randomize the set scale between 0 0.6 and 1.2 in all of the axes complete random scale for the size of our life this curve will do fine from big to small and here we go that's a better size but they are still flying forever so let's add a force, let's add gravity and we can also randomize this y by the way between minus 7 and minus 15 for example it's really up to you to play a little bit with these values if you want them to go much higher or spread all, all around the ground for example now we can add a collider so it collides with a plane it only collides with planes by the way a very limited collision but it will collide eventually yeah so there you go you have a rock piercing the ground some smaller rocks around that central rock and then little pebbles flying around now what really adds a nice touch to this is smoke and i highly recommend you guys to check out this tutorial that i made the stylized smoke it's short and simple and you will get a really cool smoke that fits super well with this herd bender once you have it as you can see it will end with the constantly spawning smoke the changes you need to do is say that it has a single burst of around 40 particles a much more uniform velocity it mostly goes up in the Y and a little bit to the sides but what's really important here is to add a circle as you can see rotate it as well and then you will have all of these properties of the shader that you are going to learn how to create in the tutorial which is a plus because you will learn that part of shader graph essentially what I did up here then is add smoke whenever it goes down by simply adding another single burst with a delay and whenever it goes down it adds that really nice touch of smoke and then I added another two single bursts for when it's shaking just to create a tiny bit of smoke like four particles before going all the way down and that's essentially it the smoke really adds a nice touch in combination with the rocks there's a lot of things you can do with this technique I hope this is a great beginning for you to develop a more elaborate herd bender effect I have made quite a few which are available on my patrons page in case you want to check them out up close it would mean a lot if you could support me it keeps the channel running and I want to say thank you to each patron and as usual a uh, shout out to the top tier patrons which are 3D Sorcery, Alexander Brazy, Alper Arichai, Achilles Benitez, Aviat Tobali, Avid VR, Baz, Christopher Vivas, Kruby Dubidu, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Diaku, Diego Marques, Duitron, Effect Yellow, El Sheriff, Easy, Fang Striker, Gio, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, Rairo Garcia, Kissy Miller, Christoph Samlai, Leon Nolte, Lutuli, Long Nyon, Lulu Vrumet, Mark Anum, Michael Gann, Michael Late, Naru, Neo Gentrix, NR, Oitsk, Pradip Sen, Q216, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Rohit Gupta, Verisuta, Vu Min, Will Hoos, Will Polion, Dang Mao Dang, and Ching Pyongling. Your support is super much appreciated, guys. And to anyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you on the next video. 
Thanks. Bye.